Hi there, uh, my name is Dr. Anthony Chow and I'm an assistant professor uh, at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro in the Library and Information Science uh, Department and our, uh, the title of our presentation is Systemic Educational Change in Society uh, and it's a particular look at uh, Georgia's Central Educational Center and Career Academies in the United States. Uh, with us and my co-presenter is the CEO of the school. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Dr. Chow. My name is Mark Whitlock. I'm the CEO of Central Educational Center in Noonan, Coweta County, Georgia, uh, the model for Georgia's Career Academy initiative. Uh, we're entering, uh, Dr. Chow, as you know, our 10th year of operation in a, in a week or so. Congratulations. Hard to believe it's been that long. It is. It is. It's uh, it's been a uh, story that's uh, bubbled up in our community over the last decade and uh, has certainly caught the attention of many communities around the country and, and now in other countries. Excellent. Um, our presentation overview, first thing we're going to cover is uh, what is systemic educational change? Why is it being used in Georgia? discuss a little bit, uh, especially from Mark, the story of CEC and how it came about uh, and how it's being replicated through uh, a, a Georgia Career Academy movement uh, and the impact it has on overall Georgia educational reform and the general implications uh, from, from this. So why is it being used in Georgia, USA? Um, it, first of all, it's based on the Eden Conspiracy by Joe Harless, who is a resident of uh, Coweta County. Uh, and he uh, painted a grand vision of what uh, the use of sy systems principles might look like uh, in uh, public education. Um, and what's unique about uh, Dr. Harless's perspective is because he's approaching it from 30 years of application in industry uh, tied together with the uh, theory uh, and principles of uh, the systems approach. Essentially, uh, industry um, specifically was not um, overly uh, satisfied with the quality of high school graduates uh, in Coweta County uh, and they approached the superintendent. Uh, the superintendent uh, turned around and approached Dr. Harless uh, who had a reputation uh, for interest in education reform uh, uh, on top of his background uh, and uh, Dr. Harless uh, took the lead in um, designing and creating uh, the school. Uh, and the and Anthony, to, to add to the, um, the, the backdrop in Coweta County, this, this is a county that um, is a diverse uh, business uh, county. We're not uh, based in any one industry. So we had a number of industries uh, and a significant manufacturing presence who were telling our school system that um, not only were current grads uh, not meeting their current needs, but they were telling us that their industries were changing dramatically and it could project that future grads, unless change was made, wouldn't be able to step out of a high school environment and into a, a more automated, uh, more global, um, flatter type of business environment that we were beginning to experience in Coweta County. So the, the global economy was uh, making its presence known in Coweta. That's what industry leaders said concerned them the most, that they had to prepare for the future. Thank you, Mark. And, and I think the key, too, is Dr. Harless, uh, his perspective is that um, it's, society is tied together. Um, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. So what is systemic educational change? Um, Banathi uh, defined it as com a complete redesign of education to match the needs of society. Rigaluth calls it a paradigm shift, uh, which is holistic and not piecemeal. And Dr. Harless calls it a quote-unquote conspiracy among stakeholders to educate for what he calls accomplished citizenship. Anthony, I think that uh, Dr. Harless's definition of a conspiracy has uh, really uh, caught 
the attention of so many people in our local communities in Georgia who've begun to replicate this model because he he looks at, uh, when he talks about uh, accomplished citizenship, he looks out farther than the traditional educational model. He looks to the, the end goal, which is that accomplished citizen, rather than the traditional goal in education, what's the next step right. in education? Absolutely. I, I think that's get, gathered a lot of attention from people in Georgia communities. Absolutely. And, and the fact that uh, CEC and, and this type of model is looking less at college as the end goal and uh, much further beyond that as far as the impact of that individual. Okay, the story of CEC opened in 2000, uh, so from the date that Dr. Hollis was approached by the superintendent, uh, it took about three years to um, design uh, and open the school. Uh, it is a charter school uh, with a career and technical education um, uh, focus uh, and one of its other highlights is its uh, actual partnership and site uh, of both uh, the uh, the public school as well as the technical college. And Mark, you wanted to add something. With the heavy uh, in influence of business and industry, our uh, our charter board includes 17 members, nine of whom come from the local business community. That was part of the uh, Design that came out of the Harlem's approach to developing CEC. Right. Absolutely. Anthony, we've now had two Georgia governors who call this uh, a model for educational reform, as well uh, the current lieutenant governor uh, took on this initiative as one of his two signature pieces in an educational reform platform. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Cagle has uh, been the creator of the broader Charter Career Academy initiative. It's uh, now morphing into an even bigger project which will connect small schools within schools that might replicate small pieces of what we do in the larger Georgia Charter Career Academy or CEC model. Right. And the, uh, the legend is that uh, Dr. Harless, along with uh, a contingent from Coweta County, had 15 minutes with the governor, uh, and the story and vision of Dr. Harless and the group was so compelling that uh, an hour and a half later, uh, the governor was uh, convinced that this would be a primary vehicle for economic and educational change in Georgia. Convinced to the point that he picked up the phone and called a state agency head in the technical college system and uh, gave the marching orders that this was to be put together. Excellent. Uh, CEC was awarded the 2004 National Model High School. And this was by a group, Anthony, that um, looked at uh, replicable national high school models. We were in a group of 30 original replicable models this was a study that was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, included a number of uh, educational agencies like the Council for Chief State School which was led by the International Center for Leadership. Excellent. Uh, and today there are over 15 replications statewide, which we'll discuss uh, a little bit more in just a second.